Before getting started, this is a spoiler warning. I'll be going into depth into plot details and various endings of Nier Automata. I strongly encourage you to experience the game for yourselves first, whether that be through playing it or watching a video playthrough. This game's absolutely worth it. That being said, let's get started. What you just saw was a snippet of what Nier Automata was marketed to be, a traditional action hack and slash starring an attractive poster girl and you think, great, violence and eye candy. But that's simply not an accurate assessment, and the opening line demonstrates the depth beyond the marketing. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse? Or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle, and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. So the marketing and this opening quote seem to clash considering the impression that the trailer gives you, but the reality is that Automata regularly confronts big picture questions and philosophical themes in a largely nihilistic manner, and this opening served to prepare you for that confrontation. There are three playable android protagonists in Automata, 2B, 9S, and A2. And there are also five endings that need to be completed to get the full experience of the game. The premise revolves around a conflict between androids and machines, androids who are created by humans who have fled to the moon while the conflict rages on, and machines who are created by alien invaders. The results of this conflict leads to strong questions about identity, religion, and existentialism. The first identity questions are raised by this character, a resistance supply trader, who represents the ship of Theseus paradox. His left leg's been damaged, and as an android he could replace it, but refuses to do so as it's his last original part, and the thought of doing so has him questioning if he'd even be himself anymore. This seemingly insignificant side character encountered early in the game plants an idea of conflicting identity in the player, and while maybe not the most impactful, it sets a precedent for more thought-provoking topics to be brought up in the story. Such as when 2B and 9S are brought to an existential crisis and try to find meaning in life after discovering a major plot point central to the existential philosophy of Automata. That means mankind no longer exists. <sighs> in truth, humans never went to the moon at all. Are they dead? 2B. Look! Destroyed alien motherships. Learning that humanity and the aliens are both extinct leaves us as the players and the characters of Automata questioning the reasoning behind all the conflict and how to create meaning in an absence of a core purpose. Remember the opening line of the game? It references God. Humanity is quite literally a godly figure in the perspective of our android protagonists. No one fights without a reason, and we need a god worth dying for. This begs the question, what if you were presented with concrete evidence that your faith was invalid? How would that change who you are fundamentally as a person? Can you replace it with something else? Is it possible to move forward from this knowledge? Or is everything meaningless? This plot point encapsulates the nihilism of Friedrich Nietzsche, who famously said, God is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed him. Further expanding on Nietzsche's nihilism in Automata is seen in the machine cult, who aim to become his gods through death. Nietzsche believed that enlightenment is achieved after life, and the machine's interpretation of this means they'll become his gods after committing mass suicide. Parallel to this, with a stronger focus on existentialism, and a bitter religion is seen in the primary antagonist of the first two playthroughs, Adam and Eve. Outside of their names, Adam and Eve don't share much similarities between the biblical figures. Their stories go like this. Adam was created first, literally born of machines replicating human acts of sex despite having no reproductive organs, and Adam creates Eve after initially being defeated by 2B and 9S. Once each of them are created, we learn that they have differing objectives. 
Adam seeks to learn about humanity, while Eve aims to protect Adam. Before being killed, Adam concludes the core essence of humanity is violence. The core of humanity is conflict. They fight, steal, kill. This is humanity in its purest form. Adam forms his own conclusion about what makes humans human, and after completing that, he dies at the hands of 2B, fulfilling his meaning in life. However, his death leaves Eve in a situation identical to that of our protagonist. His life is empty of meaning. I know you two feel the same. That this world is utterly meaningless. So how do we create meaning? Is it inherent? Is there a point to living if meaning is lost? These are just a few questions raised by the conclusion of Adam and Eve's arc. Automata dives deeper into these themes and upcoming endings. In the next playthrough, which sees you take control of A2, the primary conflict is created when A2 mercy kills 2B, in which 9S was a witness. 2B! 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 Are you... Unknown to 9S, 2B was already dying of a virus and gave her memories to A2 so that some of her may live on, but all 9S sees is murder, causing him to become enraged. From this point on, 9S makes it his mission to kill every last machine, and then kill A2. After a long series of events, which sees A2 help pacifist machines and 9S go on a machine-killing rampage, the two face off atop a machine tower that will destroy the remaining human data on the moon. The weight of this upcoming battle is heavy on the player. A2 is a character you spent little time playing as, whose dialogue has her come off as cold, unattached, and angry, but her actions suggest otherwise. Whereas 9S is someone you spent a significant amount of time with, whose grief of 2B you understand, but you also witness his deteriorating mental state and you must choose who you will side with. There's no sitting on the fence here. Your decision ultimately demonstrates which of the character's beliefs you agree with. Will you choose to see that there are joys to living? Or will you agree with the sentiment that it's all meaningless? Regardless of who you side with, the ending is bittersweet, and the credits begin to roll. While the stories of 2B, 9S, and A2 may have come to a close, your experience as a player isn't over quite yet. In order to get what's considered the true ending, Automata directly asks the players questions about what they just experienced.
The support pods who have accompanied you on this journey interject over the credits, claiming they simply cannot accept this conclusion. They ask your thoughts, and upon agreeing them, it prompts them to attempt to revive the androids and change the course of fate, while also triggering a near impossible gameplay sequence. Every time you fail, you're asked a question. Do you accept defeat? Is it all pointless? Pods, your fortune to pod 153. We were created to execute the Android's project Yorma plans. We had no capacity for emotion, but when we six were connected and exchanged information, do you think games are silly little things? I cannot deny the feeling of something resembling consciousness and emotion being born. Unable to reply. Perhaps we now understand that not everything has to have an answer. Do you admit there's no meaning to this world? To reach the end, the player must answer no to all of these questions, which directly contradicts the bleak, nihilistic, and downright depressing themes that Automata has shown throughout the course of the game. By directly making you answer these existential questions at its true conclusion, but also needing to answer no to each, subverts expectations built up after everything you've experienced. That's something Automata does expertly. It begins by subverting expectations created by marketing, and ends by subverting its own nihilistic themes. This is what made my experience with Nier Automata unexpectedly thought-provoking.